especially we watch Andrew Dunkley come out with his children. What a good night for him. Yeah, yeah, what a great night. Yeah, so Dad Andrew Dunkley played 217 games at the Swans. He sort of had a big influence on my footy, I think. I think he's probably mainly the off-field stuff. Well, there's a few kids there, isn't there? <laughs> we signed the sun rule, baby. Yeah. My situation is pretty unique. Like, I've got a big decision to make, and a lot of things go into that. Like, I, I would like to start... Do you remember that game? Do, do I remember running out? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That's probably the only thing I remember about Dad's career. Really? Yep. How old were you there? Oh, five. Yeah, right. Yeah. So last wow. time... I like to stay in Victoria, but um, that's not the reality at the end of the day. Like, if you do open nominate, you can end up anywhere. So, it's the risk that um, I might take, I might not. Now, the players that we did get, obviously great, um, but there was one player there that, uh, you know, was obviously nominated as, as through the father-son, um, Dunkley. Yep. Um, we weren't, weren't able to get him, so that, uh, obviously, a, a bit unfortunate. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, it's a tough call. We had to pass on that. You need to be able to take the emotion out of it. Um, yes, it was a hard call and there'll be certain members of our club disappointed, but our job is to assist the coaches in assembling the best list we can to try to push forward and have another crack at winning a flag. That's what the whole thing's about. So effectively you weren't, you weren't on their best team, is what they seen. That's what he just said then. That's interesting. I've never seen that vision. How does that make you feel? That makes me feel a bit weird, to be <laughs> honest. Because like, obviously they didn't match the bid, so it was like, obviously... Straight away, that was the disappointment, but also excitement for going to the Bulldogs. So, I wait. So, did you not going into the draft? I thought were I was you going, thinking you were to, going Sydney. to Sydney. Yep. Wow. And then when it didn't happen, what were you thinking? Oh, I was excited. I didn't really think about it too much because I was excited to go to the Dogs and knew that they were a really exciting club because that was the first year before that they made finals yeah. for quite a while. Two fifteen. That's yeah. right. So, good yeah, team well, to, that's crazy. to come into. I had the opportunity to meet him about midway through last year, and um, yeah, we're all excited to uh, to get him on board. Terrific overhead mark, enormous courage. Um, so, uh, as a prospect for our football club, uh, he's pretty bright. Well, Josh, how have you settled into your new home? Yeah, it's been really good so far. I'm loving every minute, and yeah, it's, it's just amazing to be here and on an AFL list and out there with the boys. You seem really keen to get to Melbourne, particularly. Yeah, either way, like as a kid growing up, your dream is to be an AFL footballer, and yeah, it is good that I've ended up stayed in Melbourne. But at the same time, I, my goal was to just be on an AFL list, and I've achieved that, and I'm happy being a Western Bulldogs player. I just hope to sort of get a game and get as fit as I can, and improve my footy, and hopefully, yeah, get selected for the game. Obviously, your first goal. Yeah. Would have made string, it good. String tapped it over the top to me. It wasn't my first kick, but it was one of my like first disposals of the game. You always and remember your first goal, don't you? Yeah. Who came to you? Who, which family members came? To my first game? Yeah. All you you would have had half a yarum there, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Literally? Yeah, there was a fair few, yeah. All my like cousins and aunties and uncles and all my family, obviously. And, yeah. Yeah. The arms of Cordy emerging with it, McLean, now Dunkley in two minds. That's an intelligent kick and he it I think he did. So did you hear the what he said? The first and last time you've ever done something like that? What? Left foot? 40 metre kick across the body and your left foot lacing a defender out. Do you reckon I meant it? Um, no, I reckon your intention was to square it up, but not... I don't think he meant to kick to Woody. Yeah, you're right. I meant to kick it to Dico. That's who I thought you would have been kicking it yeah. to. This is a good game too, wasn't it? But yeah, left foot, cross goal. Look at the score. You guys were... We were on the ropes, mate. I know. And first I, quarter. Because that's, that's off the back of Hawthorne's three-peat. They were going for a four-peat. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, we kicked the last, I think, couple I know, of this I quarter. Remember. And then we... At that stage, that would have been the biggest crowd to play in front of, sure. Yeah, by far. How many people were there? Oh, I think there was 85 or 90 or something. Jeez, you would never take that for granted, eh? No. No. That was a nice left foot. Well done, mate. Thanks. Daniel forward, off they go, held up, the kick is on its way from Dunkley. Just slipped through his fingernails, the Rattore around the corner, Dunkley, he's kicked it. So that was the elimination final. Elimination final. When yeah. you guys, the week before, finished, you played Freo, didn't you? And you got hammered over there. Yeah, we finished, finished seventh and Freo smoked us in 
Pav's last game. And then, um, yeah, we went back 10 days later and played on a Thursday night and smashed West Coast. Which Surely was... that game is a game that gave you confidence to be like, yeah, well, absolutely. I actually think we could yeah. win the whole thing. Well, it was after the Freo game that Bevo was like, does everyone believe that we can do this? Mm. And everyone was sort of like, yeah. Yeah. And then we came over 10 days later and nothing really stopped us. It's cool. It's unreal. I've been wanting to say this for as long as I can remember. The Bulldogs go through to a grand final. Can you believe it? 20,090 days since their last grand final. Mate, that gives me goosebumps. Surely that gives <laughs> you goosebumps. Yeah, it does. I just remember after the after that prelim, Zane Cordy, you just saw him on the vision. But yeah. he was him and I were sitting next to each other on the bus after the prelim. And we both just looked at each other and were like, we're playing in the grand, grand final, final next week. He played, I think he played 12 games and I'd played 15 or something. Yep. We're both going to a grand final against and, Sydney, who... And that game itself, prelim, was one of the... In the AFL, on the AFL, top 50 games of all time. It was like number five yeah. of all time. Yeah. That it's, must be incredible. It was the craziest game I've ever been involved in, I reckon. Like, just the first quarter... Uh, the last quarter, the first 10 minutes of the last quarter was like, they kicked two in a row yeah. and we were gone. I remember watching and I thought, wow, John's going to run all over him. Yeah. And you guys came back. We came Isn't back. Isn't it true in the... After the game, so when you guys were singing the song, Libba rolled his ankle because he was celebrating that after. Nah, it was in the celebrations. So the siren, oh, he rolled his the ankle. siren goes and everyone's jumping up and down, and Libba hurt his ankle. <laughs> so he's hurt his ankle that year, took time off because he needed to, and came back and celebrated the other one. rolled his other ankle. The other it's one. Great. Crazy. It's good. it's good. What a day. McLean will keep virtually on the siren. Number 20, Josh Dudley. Number 21, Tom. It's just crazy because, like, that was, I remember at the time, it's my first year, end of the first year, and you're like, this is just sort of part of the, the everyday sort of, thing but this is what every year's like every year's like <laughs> like yeah i actually get a bit emotional thinking about it now because it's like you don't know what 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 it takes to get to that point yeah and i was lucky to obviously be involved in the footy club at the time but mm. now looking back it's a pretty special moment and something that i'll treasure forever obviously but the amount of work that went into it is quite incredible where were you when the siren went in the forward line because toby was having a shot for goal and did you know how long was left no idea. I just saw the security guards walk around the fence yeah, five minutes ago, knows. and we're up by twenty odd. And yeah, what's the first? So when the siren went, what'd you do? I love hearing what people do. Did I you run ran, the siren? Yeah, fall to I the ran. Well, I ran to Toby, and I think Jacko was there, and there was a few others. Just fell to the ground and got up, and then you just saw me run over to. What have you done with your medal and your jersey? Frame my jersey and keep my medal um, locked away, so I can still show people. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can get get there again. Fingers crossed. And I reckon you feel like the reason why you appreciate it is probably because you've now experienced grand final loss. You know, yeah. how, you know how freaking hard it is to get back there. And but also just like the ups and downs you go through as yeah. well, like injuries. After that year, I had an ankle surgery, which yeah. pretty much cooked my whole preseason. And, and you go through ups and downs like we talk about all the mm. time. So, yep. Who's the hardest player you've ever played on? Uh, oh. In your hundred games, mate. This grand final. This 2016 grand final, Josh Kennedy, best yeah. best I've ever seen. Half time, he was. Yeah, he'd kick three, I think. Yeah, he had, had 25, 25 or something. So you played on him? I played on him. In the second half? Or nah, in, in, the game? in the game, like I was playing on him, or not on him the whole time, but aware of him around the stoppages and stuff, and he just dominated. Yeah. What about the best player you've played with? You. <laughs> I was waiting for that. All right, serious question, mate. Best player you've played with? Monty? You, mate. You. Come on, mate, answer the question. I'm answering the question. (laughs) Jeez, he's played with some bad players, and if I'm the best player he's played with... Uh, Yeah, you. Nah, honestly. Honestly, go... I want to know. I seriously want to know. 
and for what reason? It doesn't have to be because they're the most talented, but influence maybe? Uh, like Liam Picken. Why is that? Just because he'd stand up in big moments. Yeah. He was unbelievable in this final In this series. game, he was unbelievable. But final series was unbelievable. Yeah, in, uh, in general, Pico was just one of those players that would just always, when you needed him, he would stand Love up him. and he'd play a role for us every week. And I think he the next year after this, he got concussed. So yeah. I only really played one year with him, but he was one of the most reliable players I've ever played with. Yeah, yeah nice. that's why to you, mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs>
much, eh? Yep, considering the position that we came from, far out. And where we were, we were replaced, and the fact that we were actually winning. Like, I still can't get over the fact that we were actually winning by three, was it 20 points at one stage? Yeah, it was 20 something points. With five minutes to go on third, thinking, Bonte keep the goal, and it's like, wow, we're actually a genuine chance here. And then, mm. yeah, it's hard to watch. It does take a, probably a week or so to really sink in, and in terms of getting over it, I don't think you ever get over a, a grand final loss. It's just a matter of you know coming back the next year in in really good shape, which we have, and the boys are really excited for 2022. Adam Trelaw helps. Yeah, he does. Adzi has been really good for me, and I think um, for him, well, the way things happened last year, and uh, to be all together now is just you know everything happens for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. Oh, Guy Sebastian. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, Guy Sebastian's your favourite singer. Oh, I just, mate, this is my first year. I was just under the pump. You what know? song were you singing? I just, he just randomly came to mind. I was like, <laughs> Could you give me a song at least? <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't if even you know. Could see that song? <laughs> That's the winner of Australian Idol, mate. Michaela Baranoff from X Factor just recently. Yeah. Had something there. Do you know who, what? Do you know who that is? Who? It was a girl that was on X Factor. No idea. Michaela, where? What's? I happened? used to watch X Factor, The Voice, like all those shows, and she was a good singer, and I liked her. She was good, but she was like not nuts. No one. Is she her. still singing? No idea. Oh, I just reckon at home. Um, maybe on a rooftop at home, and yeah, sort of looking out in the city, and pretty nice sort of night, and nice weather. How cute's that? Jump on my roof and let's just sit on the <laughs> roof and have a drink and have something to eat. Look over Hyatt or something. Jeez, these are bad, aren't they? <laughs> That's it? How good? I can't believe uh, how you sound. I think I'm sick. You sound sick, a bit like Kaiser. That's good. That was great.